I once read that the British explorer and cartographer, Captain James Cook, loved the flowers of his homeland so much that before each voyage, he would have large bags of seeds indigenous to England loaded into his stateroom. And then when he arrived in various places thousands of miles from home, like the South Pacific, for example, when he stepped ashore, he would do so with one of the bags slung across his shoulder so that as he walked about, he could cast the seeds of his native land everywhere he went. And so the legend goes to this day that in places thousands of miles and oceans away from England, that the beautiful flowers of that nation continue to grow. I love that story, and I share it because I think it leads us into our worship theme today as we hear one of Jesus' best-known stories that begins by saying, a sower went out to sow, and continues by Jesus talking about spreading the seeds of God's kingdom and leads us to look within at our lives of faith. Welcome to worship here at St. Martin's Lutheran Church in Annapolis, Maryland, where we continue to worship remotely but still together. And for any who join us from a distance, I want to extend special words of welcome to you. Certainly, it is our prayer that through this time of worship, that God's seeds of love will be planted and take root in your lives through this holy time. If you'd like to join more fully in the liturgy by singing the hymns and sharing in the liturgy, you can find the service folder in the link that you'll find just beneath this page when you expand the page description. And if you'd like to help us as we plant seeds of God's love in this world through our ministry, you can do that by clicking the other link that will enable you to share in the electronic giving option. We thank God for all the generous folks who enable the work of Christ to continue nearby and far away as our nation and as our world continue to hunger for hope and blessing. Thank you for responding in this way as you're able and as you feel called to share. And now let us be reminded that when we turn to God in our hearts and seek out restoration and new life, that he never fails to open his arms in love. He never fails to shower us with grace because his love for us is beyond anything we can imagine. And so we begin this day by using the order for confession and forgiveness as you find in the service folder. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation, amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Here thy praise is gladly chanted, here thy seed is duly sown. Amen. My friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, 
where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. And for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. And as for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So before I preach, I want to just say a few things to the kids who are watching. First of all, Vacation Bible School, Hope at Home, starts tomorrow. So I'm really excited because I'll get to see a lot of you guys on Zoom. And it's going to be a different Vacation Bible School this year, but it's going to be great. So please say a prayer for your teachers and for everybody who's been working hard to make sure that it's really good this year. The other thing that I wanted to tell you about is we just heard a lesson, and it reminded me of a guy who was born a long, long time ago, back in 1774. He was born in Massachusetts, and he had 12 brothers and sisters, and sometimes his house was so noisy and so crazy that he just wanted to get away to somewhere where it was quieter, and so he would go out outside and he would go in the woods and he realized how much he loved it outside and how much he loved animals. Well, he grew up and there were all kind of stories about him. Some say that he wrestled a bear. Some say that he would sleep in a tree with raccoons. Those might not be true. But the one thing that is true is because he loved nature so much and especially because he loved apples so much, that he traveled all over the place planting seeds and starting little trees and then handing them out to people and asking them to plant them in their yards. And because of him, there are apple trees all over the place. And you already know who I'm talking about. His name was John Chapman, but we still call him Johnny Appleseed. And so, I hope at home, when the season is right, and maybe you can do it now, check on this, maybe you can start to plant some seeds if you haven't already done that, so that new things will grow. And several weeks back, I asked you guys to be in charge of prayers at mealtime, to pray for the world that needs a lot of help right now. But there's another prayer, and I bet you know it, but just in case you don't, it goes like this. Oh, the Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me. Amen, 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 amen. So that's your prayer song for the week, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, and God bless you guys. And now, my friends, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hugh Hammond Bennett was frustrated. A native North Carolinian and a graduate of UNC, 
He had distinguished himself as a pioneer in the field of soil conservation. And in the 1930s, when the Southern Plains states of the U.S. went through the worst environmental catastrophe our nation has ever known, he was tagged to head the newly formed Soil Erosion Service, a federal agency now referred to as the Natural Resource Conservation Service, but Hugh Bennett had a problem. While legislators in D.C. knew about the terrible situation with the Dust Bowl in the Plains, the problem felt far, far away, and there were other matters in those Depression-era days that were calling for their more immediate attention. You probably remember that the Dust Bowl, as it was called, was brought on when a cyclically recurring drought was paired with human arrogance and greed. Through the years of the 1900s, millions of acres of land had once been covered with prairie grasses for grazing were then plowed up to grow wheat. Farmers were wildly reckless in how they treated the land, and they didn't think or seem to care about the possible ramifications of what they were doing because they were making money. But when the weather patterns changed and the rain stopped falling and the winds whipped up in 1930, the destruction began. All that precious topsoil dried up and started to blow away. Nothing grew. Animals died. Hundreds of thousands of people were dislocated. And Hugh Bennett knew that a national awakening led by federal legislation was needed, but Congress wasn't listening. Until May of 1934, when one of the most severe dust storms ever recorded hit. Over a two-day period, high-level winds caught and carried some 350 million tons of topsoil from the Great Plains, and it made it all the way to the eastern seaboard. And on May 11th, knowing the storm was inbound and using every stalling technique he could think of, Hugh Bennett, who was testifying before a House committee, managed to keep that committee in session until the dark gloom, as it was called, descended upon Washington, D.C. And when it did, legislators stepped outside, and for the first time, many of them, like millions of others on the East Coast, now smelled and breathed and tasted the dust. History notes that the storm could not have been better timed, because on that day, Congress woke up. There was the needed awakening and a newfound understanding that people need to care about the soil. We need to care about the soil. My friends, today in Scripture, we are met by a very familiar story that Jesus told 2,000 years ago, and sometimes it's called the parable of the sower, but just as often it's referred to as the parable of the soils. And my hope today and in the days that lie ahead that we might all have a May 11th, 1934 moment when together we say to ourselves, we people need to care about the soil. We need to care about our soil. When we refer to the many stories that Jesus told, we call them parables. And indeed, the word parable has become synonymous for the word story. But today especially, I think it might help us to notice that in Greek, the word parable is formed by combining two words, para, which means alongside of, and balian, which means to set or place something. So what Jesus' stories are actually doing is setting rather ordinary sounding things like dirt, alongside of spiritual truths like the matters of our souls so that we might understand and so that we might grow. And regarding this parable, 
we can do that rather easily if we just place the I in the word soil with a U. So we go from S-O-I-L to S-O-U-L, and when we do that, we hit pay dirt, pun intended. A basic premise here is that the soul is a mystical dimension of the self where God longs to relate to us and how, we might ask, does that happen? Through the gospel, through the word, through the voice of God as it comes to us through the proclamation, through the spoken or the written word, and perhaps in other ways as well. And so, we notice that the divine sower casts his seed in our lives and in this world through the word. The announcement that the crucified and risen one lives and he is with us and he loves us. And the assumption here is that until that word takes root, that the human soul hasn't fully real realized the wholeness that we long for and that God wants for us. One of my favorite quotes is from Blaise Pascal, and basically it goes along these lines, that there is a God-formed place in every human that can then only be filled by God. But we humans try to put other things in that place, power, success, money, drugs, alcohol, whatever, but quickly people come to realize that none of those things satisfy, none of them work. The well-known story of St. Augustine reminds us of this. He had been living a wild life of wine, women, and song back in the fourth century in northern Africa, but spiritually Augustine was famished. At the foundational level in his heart, he wasn't happy or whole or satisfied, and so finally with that awareness, he was ready, and one day a small seed that was planted that changed him and changed everything. As the story goes, Augustine was in a garden, sick at heart, sick in sin, and he seemed to hear a child's voice urging him and saying, take and read. So he took the book that happened to be at his side and it was St. Paul's letter to the Romans, and there he turned to the voices, to the verses that say, let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and so for him in that moment, the word penetrated the soil of his soul, and it began. In time, of course, what followed in his life was a most bountiful harvest that can come when receptive souls welcome the seed and the rocks and the thorns and the birds no longer create the obstacles that were once there. In the parable, we notice that the sower and the seed are two aspects to the story that do not change. The sower is steadfastly at his work. Each seed holds the dynamic possibility to be mixed with soil, sun, and water to bring forth that which blesses and feeds. The only thing that varies in the story is the condition of the soil, and that does resonate for me. How about for you? Have you known perhaps euphoric times when your faith was vibrant and alive, but then it faded and now seems more like a distant time? You've always meant to get back to it, but it has become elusive. Are you filled with good intentions about growing in your life of prayer and generosity and growth in faith but it keeps getting choked off by the things of this life alluded to by Pascal and evidenced by Augustine's early days, things that pull you from that which feed your soul. Or maybe you've become hard-headed or hard of heart, cynical about the church because of human failings within it, 
who are beaten up by life so much that a hard heart has become a means of self-protection and preservation. Now the beautiful thing here is that the sower is generous and steady. He continues to cast out the seeds even within this worship service he is casting, I believe. And unlike our modern farming techniques where the soil is carefully prepared ahead of time and then tractors with GPS plant in perfect rows wasting very little, our sower throws seeds indiscriminately and lovingly knowing full well that our soil might not even be quite ready, but with a hope that that day will come and ultimately with the spirit moving in us and activated by faithful affirmation of God in our lives, we come to a yes moment and the seed is planted deep within. It takes root, it grows, and then good things follow. So I think that the parable of the soul invites people like you and me to explore, to examine, to care about the soil of our hearts so that we might listen anew, welcome the seed, and finally live and love and share and seek justice and kindness in the power of the Spirit for the sake of God and his beloved in all places. So my brothers and sisters, may we care about the soil. May God let our hearts be good soil. And may we grow and flourish to his glory and our joy. Amen. And now we have opportunity to return thanks to God who gives us everything we have. We do this through our offering. And together, as we work for the sake of Christ in this world, our gifts go far so that people might know his light and blessing. At this time, I would invite us all to share in the offering.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace now and forever in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.